The John Ford Podcast. Not suffering from insanity, enjoying every minute of it. John Ford. Radio. Well, here we are again for podcast number eight of the John Ford Podcast, the evening rancor. Even though I mostly record this during the day. So why I call it the evening rancor, I'm not quite sure. I, I liked it because it rhymed with the evening anchor. You know, like, I'm Brian Williams, your evening anchor. Except, I, you know, I couldn't see myself as an anchor. Unfortunately. Unless I was to get thrown overboard. The evening rancor? <laughs> that seemed to kind of fit. I know we're like a day late for National Podcast Day or whatever the hell it was yesterday. I think it was like National Podcast Day. The the super day of podcasts. But, you know, day late and a dollar short. Yeah, boy. Pretty much, uh, you know, the story of my life. Great. One of the things I'd like to do on the podcast would be like, you know, share my magnificent musical knowledge with you. Oh, please. Let me let you in on a little secret uh, when it comes to broadcasting, when it comes to the radio, folks. Most people get into radio because they think they have this amazing musical knowledge. They think they have this personal gift for sharing this wonderful music that they love with everyone else. And, you know, you start in radio thinking that. And then if you last for a few years, let's say maybe 5, 10, some people 15, some people it takes longer. Some people never get over the concept of being a music nerd, that they actually think that the music they like is better than the music other people like. And you are Do a so. hack. And a lot of times it is, but a lot of times it isn't. But you come to the realization that uh, really what you enjoy is shooting your big mouth off, right? It's, it's all about, you know, having an opinion and shooting your big mouth off. It's not about sharing your wonderful musical knowledge out of the kindness of your heart. But still, there is some music that I would like to share with you because, as we know, my musical tastes are much better than anyone else's. No. But to do so, you would have to, like, you know, go around all these copyright laws. I don't want to, like, drive you crazy with what is involved with copyright uh, playing music on a podcast. In, in short, you can't, is basically the deal. If you're going to do streaming radio, if you're going to stream live, uh, you can get a license for that, you know, for the mechanical and the songwriter rights, because you're streaming. But with a podcast, because legally the person that listens is downloading it, you're actually letting them download the song. And thanks to the Congress of the United States and, of course, the uh, Copyright Term Extension Act, which is also known as the Mickey Mouse Act, (laughs) created by Sonny Bono. Boy, they got him, didn't they? That tree just, you know, kissed him right in the face. (laughs) Extended copyright uh, for another 70 years, corporate authorship for 120 years after creation or 95 years after publication, whichever end is earlier. In other words, Disney got their claws into Sonny Bono, and, you know, he'd written a couple of bad songs, too. And they just extended this copyright, you know, ad infinitum ad nauseum. And basically it means that anything recorded, you know, before 1976, you won't be able to play. It won't go into what's called public domain, which is that nobody gets paid a copyright for it, until the year 3,469,000. So forget about ever playing music on your podcast. Unless, of course, you're going to play stuff that uh, has no copyright, which you can get away with doing. But pretty much everything that you've ever heard has a copyright. And there's all different kinds of copyrights. There's the songwriter copyright. There's the mechanical. I told you it's going to drive you nuts. Songwriter copyright, mechanical copyright, reproduction copyright, uh, recording copyright, Mickey Mouse copyright, the copyleft copyright, all kinds of copyrights. There's all kinds of legal terminology involved in it, but the bottom line is you can't. So if I wanted to play, you know, something like this, or something like this, or maybe even a song like this, or a song like this from a guy who's been dead for almost 100 years, or something like this that's fairly new, or one like this from somebody that should be dead, and here's another dead person, I can't do it. Because those copyrights are still in existence. A lot of these copyrights are still in existence for people that have been dead for almost a hundred years. That is just insane. So there's my little medley of songs that I can't really play for you. And, you know, I, I paid... 
obviously I played just a little piece of them. But, you know, God bless you if you can figure out what the hell they were. Because, you know, a lot of them were even less than a second. And just to show you how insane it is, you could spend hours online trying to find out whether or not if a song is in the public domain. As an example, I just picked one song at random, and that's a song called The Cuckoo Bird, which is an old folk song. It probably was written, nobody even knows when it was written. So I looked that up. I could guess, because the song, nobody knows when it was written, that it was recorded in the 30s, I think, or late 20s, that the songwriter copyrights no longer exist for it. It's, it's under public domain as far as the songwriting, and nobody knows who wrote it, so how can a songwriter get paid? But the mechanical copyright, I have no idea about whether or not some record company still owns that. No. And you would think it's probably in the public domain. Yes. But there's just no way of finding out. There's no, like, you know, big database on the Internet of songs that are in the public domain. You can go to the Library of Congress, but let me tell you, that's set up by the the government. (laughs) <laughs> and whenever the government gets involved in something, you can be sure it is going to be so confusing and so screwed up that you're never going to figure it out in 18 million years. No. I never could figure it out. I spent a couple hours just trying to figure out if I could play the Cuckoo Bird song. And I just don't know. I don't want to get sued for 1,857 trillion gazillion Google dollars for playing a song that's essentially 100 years old, recorded 100 years ago, and was written by who knows? The shadow do. There is nothing wrong with your radio. Do not attempt to change the station. We are controlling the transmission. We control the volume. We can change the tone to a fuzzy bass or focus it to a tinny treble. We can speed things up so fast you can hardly understand what's being said. Or we can make things so slow you don't care. We control the content. We can make it boring. Oh, come on. Or hilarious. Get out of here. We can make it stupid. (laughs) What is this? Or moronic. (laughs) I know what you mean. Oh, boy. We can even make it repetitive. (laughs) What is this? Or moronic. (laughs) I know what you mean. Oh, boy. We can even make it repetitive. It's our show. We can do anything we want. Just keep your feet to yourself. Somebody's playing footsie with me. I know that you don't think this is funny, but I don't either. Because this is... I'm the happiest guy. He's the luckiest guy. Cause I just bought a new Ford. From a wonderful dealer. Wow, what a dealer. For a Ford or a fine used car. In broadcasting in this country is taboo. And it's not less than taboo. And it's much more taboo than incest. It really is taboo. (laughs) The question is this. Do you give them what they want, or do you give them what they ought to have? The John Ford Podcast.